in this lesson, we are going to write our first DAX measure. Now we have written some DAX so far in this course to create that dates table and the different columns that we want to use. But now we're going to create a measure, not a calculated column. So this is an aggregated value. And for our first example, we are going to simply sum the amount column from the sales table. Let's just quickly have a look at this. If I click on the data view and come over to the sales table, there is the amount column for each order. And we want a total of that. Now coming back to the report view for a moment, I did use that amount field in this first visual, this table, where it's breaking down that total by category. So you might be wondering why I would create a measure when I've demonstrated that I can achieve results without it, simply by dragging the amount field in. And there's a few reasons for that. By creating a measure, I have that single calculation, which I can then use multiple times but it is only one calculation. Whilst when I move the amount field into that table and potentially a chart or two or another calculation, then I've got multiple different calculations on the amount field going on. What it also means is that I can provide formatting in advance. So you can see in the table that the beverage value only has one decimal place. It's the biggest value out of the three, but it doesn't look like it because of that deceiving missing decimal. Now I could format that column, but I would have to do that every time I use the amount field. So measures have their advantages. Let's look at creating one. I'm going to begin by clicking on the sales table on the far right so that the measure is created inside that table. Then up on the ribbon, we want a new measure button. Now I can see one now under the table tools tab, but that new measure button is found in quite a few different tabs. If I clicked back on the home tab, it's in here as well. If I click on new measure, that will open the formula bar just like before. And remember, I can hold down the control key and scroll my mouse wheel up to zoom in on that formula bar and make things a little bit clearer. Now the name of this measure will be total revenue equals and probably no surprise here that I'm going to use a sum function. Just like in Excel, DAX also has a sum function. So if I double click on sum here, that will prompt us for the column name, and that is the sales table amount field. So even though I've hidden the amount field and we cannot see it in the field list on the far right hand side, it is available for use in our calculations. If I choose the amount field, close off that bracket and press enter, that is that measure created. Now, before I go any further, up on the ribbon above, we are now on a tab called Measure Tools, and I have the opportunity to provide some formatting. I can see it is already in a currency format, but if I wanted to be more specific, I have this little currency symbol button, and I could switch this to pound sterling or into euros, or any specific currency symbol that I'm interested in. I'll put this into my pound sterling. And then we also have the option for whether we want to show decimal places or not. And I'll keep this as two decimal places. Now I selected the sales table before I created the measure. So we can see on the right hand side that it has been created within that table. However, looking back up to the ribbon, if I had made a mistake there, there's a nice drop down list where I can choose what table 
that this measure should reside in. So I could use that drop down to move the measure if I'd made a mistake and inserted it into the wrong table. So with that done, let's test this out. If I click on my report to clear the formula bar, and then if I click on that first visual, that table, and over in the visualizations pane, I'm going to remove the amount field from the values area and replace it with my total revenue measure. You can see that measures have a calculator icon to identify them. And if I drag that into that values area, I get the exact same result as before, although you can see beverages does have two decimal places. So the formatting is done in advance. I could even come and select the next table down where I have month names and I could go and drag my total revenue measure into there as well. And now I can see the overall totals by month. This is for all of the years at the moment because I don't have any year filter being applied. But it does demonstrate that our relationships are working as I'm using data from the sales table, the dates table and the products table at the moment in these two visuals. But also I've used that same measure twice. However, it is only one calculation. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get four free courses in Excel, QuickBooks, Microsoft Project, and Photoshop, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.